Okay, for part two, we're going to look at the uh, the the rolling mini game here. So we change scene into that one, um, and then the first thing we'll do is again to put a background on this one. This time we'll actually change just the color um, of the scene just here in the background, just to create a solid color. So the first things that we're going to need on here, uh, we'll bring in the ball and. We're going to add some some uh, some behaviors to the ball first to, to make it do what we want it to do. So double click this. Uh, its size first of all is a little big, so we're just going to make this down to 75 by 75. Um, and also we're just going to do a little playing with its physics first down here. Um, we want to lower its friction. So we'll put that at 0 0.1. And we don't want it to be bouncy. Also, it's here, it's collision shape is set as a rectangle, so we want it to be a circle shape. Okay, um, so behaviors that we want. Um, first off, when you touch on this, you want to be able to drag it with your fingers. So we're going to create a rule here that when the actor is pressed, uh, that we use constrain attribute here. We're going to constrain its own position, so the ball's position x. We're going to constrain that then when it's pressed to touch touch one position X, and then we will do another one of these as well for its Y position as well. So balls position Y wants to be constrained to device touch Y. So now we can press on this and drag it around. Um, when we take our finger away, we want it to actually drop. So we'll create a new one that says when touch is released this time, uh, we want it to accelerate downwards. So down 270 degrees, downwards um, about 800, relative to the scene, not to the actor. OK, so very simply now, if we place the ball in just here now, um, and we preview this so we can now drag it around and then drop it when we're done. Okay, so uh, we'll want three of these to go into our scene. Not going to let me know. Okay, so we've got three balls that we can use there. Next, we're going to bring in the ramp uh, graphic just here. Drag that in. Now, uh, as we said in the, on the course, the only shapes that you can actually um, have are rectangles or circles for, for physics type things to interact with. So what we're then going to do, we're going to create a new actor. And we're just going to call this one ramp piece. And this is how we're actually going to build the ramp up. Um, to do this, we're going to take the ramp piece and we're actually going to align it uh, in lots of different rectangles with the actual ramp. So we're just going to rotate these around. And try our best to line them up. Um, the more of these that you use, that you use the better uh, it'll actually move down this. You might take time to do something a little smoother than the one that I'm going to do here, but it should work for what I need. Okay, 
So we've got something that looks reasonably smooth going around. Um, so we've got to make it now so that the ball can actually uh, collide with this. But actually before we do that, go into the ramp piece. We need to change a few things in the physics here as well. Same low level of friction. Again, we don't want it bouncy. And we're going to untick movable as well, because we don't want it to move when something hits it. So in this, we can actually add the behavior we want in here. So we'll take a collide, and it collides with the ball. Okay, so if we run this now, oops, it does that sometimes. There we go. So if we drag this now, put it on here, okay, moves quite smoothly. And we should be able to drag it a little further down here, not go as far. Okay, so at this point now, if we're happy with the ramp, um, we're going to actually hide um, all these white pieces. And to do that, we'll double click the ramp, change its color, opacity down to zero. We go back now, and now that's uh, it's invisible, but it still works just the same. Okay, so. What we want then is for these to uh, go to possibly different scores as we go through. So we use this this object here to make some little dividers. Um, so we'll place these dividers into our scene. Obviously, they've got to be wide enough apart that the ball will fit in the gap in between them. Make a more difficult one at the bottom. We'll lower that down there. Okay, so what we're then going to do um, with these ones again, we need to muck around with their physics a little bit um, just to say that they're not movable, they need to stay still. Okay, and also actually they need to collide again with the ball. Okay, so play that again. Oops, we've got to turn off their bounciness. So go back in here. The bounciness wants to be zero. Okay, and it falls down the different gaps. Okay. So obviously down each gap we want to have a different score, so we're going to use um, these number ones to create two different axes here. And whichever ones we think are easier, we might add a 10.2. And we'll add a 40 to the end one. Okay, so what we're going to use, we're going to use the same score attribute uh, that we had before to add this score up. So I'm going to drag in a score actor uh, here. I can keep score. It's already got the same rules in that we had last time in part one, so actually we don't need to change that at all. Uh, all we need to do then is on the um, these ones, we need to say that when this one collides with the ball that it adds a little to the score, so game score changes to game score plus 40. Now I'll just copy this set of rules here. Oh actually let's have a sound as well for this one. Go into this one, paste it. So this one is just plus ten. Okay. So if we play this one now. Okay, 
but obviously the game doesn't end at the moment. I notice as well the ball goes behind the targets, um, it doesn't really matter, but um, if we wanted to change that, we can go to scene at the top here, layers, and just move the, uh, the balls up to the top level here. Okay, so the next thing to do then is um, so that um, when you've run out of the balls that um, it knows that the game is over. So to do that we're going to create um, another actor now and we'll just call this one wall and we're going to fill up the space outside of the scene um, with this wall, so all the way along there. And all the way up there. And basically what the wall is going to do, it's going to count um, how many of the balls have actually touched that and fallen through. Um, it's not going to collide with them, not going to bounce off it or anything, they're going to pass straight through it. But it'll still be counting, so we're going to create another attribute, another integer, whole number. And we just call this one um, balls left. So at the moment we've set that to three. So going back to our wall actor, then we can simply say that when it collides with the ball or overlaps, that it wants to change the attribute to game one balls left to balls left minus one. And then we can use this same uh, actor actually to create the next one that says that when that attribute balls left equals zero, then at that point it's going to change the scene to the game over page for us again. Uh, we can have a sound to go with that again. In there. Okay, so uh, let's just save this and run it. In theory now. Okay, it takes and tells us our score. Go back. Okay, so very simply, um, there's obviously some slight issues with this, and you can cheat and drop them down the ones that you like, but um, in a simple sense, that's a uh, that one now works as well. Um, so part three will uh, will move into looking at the uh, missing number one.